the Templars and the mystical teachings of the Kabbalists. Narrated by Zoran the Dragon. Ah, dear traveller, our journey continues, and today I shall take you into one of the most mysterious and profound chapters of the Templars' quest for wisdom, their encounter with the Kabbalists, the Jewish mystics who unraveled the secrets of the universe through sacred symbols, divine names, and numbers that seem to pulse with the very essence of creation. But first, allow me to set the stage. The Templars, as you may know, were not just knights wielding swords and shields. They were seekers searches of hidden truths that lay beyond the veil of the material world. After their many travels through the Holy Land, they began to realize that the divine could be understood in more ways than their rigid, dogmatic faith allowed. It was during these travels that they came into contact with the Kabbalists, a group of Jewish mystics whose teachings seemed to speak directly to the Templars' deepest spiritual yearnings. The Kabbalists were not ordinary scholars or theologians. No, they were explorers of the soul, delving into the inner workings of the divine through a mystical system known as Kabbalah, a tradition passed down through generations, hidden away from the unworthy but revealed to those who sought with an open heart. The Kabbalists believed that the universe was shaped and governed by divine forces, and that these forces could be understood through sacred geometry, symbols, and the numerical structures embedded in the very fabric of reality. One of the first lessons the Templars learned from the Kabbalists was the concept of the Tree of Life, a symbolic diagram that represents the structure of the universe and the path to spiritual enlightenment. Ah, the tree of life. It is not a physical tree, but rather a map of creation, with its ten sephirospheres of divine energy acting as gateways to different aspects of existence. The Templars were captivated by this diagram, for it revealed a hidden order to the cosmos, a structure that mirrored their own hierarchical order, but extended far beyond the earthly realm. The Kabbalists taught the Templars that the universe is composed of different layers, and that by understanding these layers, one could ascend from the material world to the divine. Each Sephira represented a different stage of creation, from the highest, most abstract forms of divine thought, down to the tangible world we live in. This was a revelation to the Templars, who had been trained to think of the divine as distant, untouchable. Now, they learned that divinity was woven into the very fabric of existence, and that they, as humans, could tap into it through study, meditation, and prayer. But there was more. The Kabbalists also introduced the Templars to the sacred power of letters and numbers. In Kabbalah, the Hebrew alphabet is not just a system of writing. It is a divine code, each letter holding profound spiritual significance. Each letter is associated with a number, and together they form words and phrases that vibrate with the energy of creation itself. The Templars were intrigued by this, for they had long been fascinated by numerology and the hidden meanings behind sacred texts. Through the practice of Gematria, the mystical interpretation of words and numbers the Kabbalists taught the Templars to see the hidden layers of meaning in the Torah and other sacred writings. For example, the word for God in Hebrew, Elohim, has a numerical value of 86, and this number appears again and again in the structure of creation. The Templars began to apply this technique to their own scriptures, finding patterns and connections they had never seen before. To them, it was as though the universe had been encoded with a divine language, and they were beginning to learn how to read it. The Kabbalists also shared with the Templars their understanding of the four worlds a concept that divides existence into four distinct realms, the world of action Asaya, the world of formation Yetzira, the world of creation Berea, and the world of emanation Eitzilit. Each world was a reflection of the divine, but at varying levels of purity and complexity, the Templars, who had spent much of their lives focused on the material world, now began to grasp the idea that reality was multi-layered, with higher realms influencing the lower. The Templars were especially drawn to the idea that humans could ascend through these worlds by purify their minds and hearts, much like the knights purified their souls through their vows and rituals. They saw parallels between the Kabbalistic journey toward enlightenment and their own quest for spiritual purity. 
but where their Christian faith often emphasized the need for divine grace, the Kabbalists showed them that through knowledge, discipline, and spiritual practice, they could actively participate in their own ascent toward the divine. And then, there was the secret of the divine name. The Kabbalists held that the name of God, particularly the Tetragrammaton YHVH, was a key to unlocking the mysteries of the universe. By meditating on these letters, contemplating their numerical and symbolic meanings, one could come closer to the divine. The Templars, always searching for the key to unlock the mysteries of heaven, were fascinated by this concept. They began to integrate these meditations into their own practices, seeking to understand the ineffable through the power of the divine name. As the Templars delved deeper into Kabbalistic teachings, they began to see the universe as a grand, interconnected system, where everything numbers, letters, symbols, and even the stars was part of a larger divine plan. The Kabbalists had shown them that the material and spiritual worlds were not separate, but intertwined, and that by understanding the hidden forces that governed both, one could gain mastery over the self and a greater understanding of the divine. But it was not just esoteric knowledge that the Templars gained from the Kabbalists. They also learned the importance of compassion and humility. In Kabbalah, the highest form of spiritual practice is not just about acquiring knowledge, but about becoming a vessel for divine light. And that light can only flow through a heart that is open and pure. The Templars, who had long been driven by a sense of duty and righteousness, began to realize that true power came from aligning themselves with the flow of divine grace. Much like the Kabbalists had taught them about the balance of heased mercy and givura severity to essential for through the Kabbalists, the Templars learned to see themselves not just as warriors, but as seekers of divine truth committed to a path of inner transformation as much as outward service. They came to understand that the battles they fought on the battlefield were but a reflection of the inner battles every human faces the battle between light and darkness, between ignorance and wisdom, between the material and the spiritual. As we close this chapter, I leave you with a thought from the Kabbalists, one that surely resonated with the Templars, as above, so below. This ancient maxim reminds us that the universe is a mirror, and that by looking deeply into ourselves, we can understand the cosmos. Through their contact with the Kabbalists, the Templars learned that the path to enlightenment is not a straight line, but a spiral leading ever deeper into the mysteries of existence, and ever higher toward the divine. And so, dear traveler, may you to find wisdom in the symbols and signs that surround you, for the language of the divine is written not only in the stars, but in the very letters of your soul.